Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Cleo and as you can see, it's in a big mess right in front of you. I've been testing the uh, Arctic Liquid Freezer range from the 280, 420 and the 360. First of all, I'd like to thank Arctic to have provided some of the uh, AIOs and this was my original which is the 280 which I bought year 2019. Now for today, I have discovered something regarding about the uh, cold plate and with this service kit that you change out and also something about the uh, offset bracket which I've not used when I've got the um, reversion tree which has three holes I'll talk about it and to show you the results of what I have discovered let's get into it I will first start off with the liquid freezer 2 service kit and why is this needed Arctic have acknowledged that if you have purchased a liquid freezer 2 between the period of May 2021 and to March 2022 which I have a unit that my friend requested he had purchased this unit a 360 unit um, this uh, January and February period and it's affected and this is actually what happened the cost of the gasket to detolerate and all the residue right is going off from the gasket itself and going to your radiator and that will cause more problem and besides this right if you look at the gasket I mean on the cold plate itself it's actually biting on the cold plate which is very bad so having said this right, this service kit is being provided by Arctic, you can obtain it. I have a video that I will leave the uh, URL at my top right hand corner so you can check it out on how I switch the cold plate and also how to obtain this kit itself. Now at the bottom here right, on my left this is my original 280 liquid freezer 2 which is bought at year 2019 and this is the service kit which is off from this box here. Now I noticed that there are some changes on the cold plate itself. If I were to compare the uh, um, January and February cold plate, right, which is affected, which is this. Now, the design is the same. This is actually revision three and above, which mine is revision one. So if you look at the uh, cold plate itself, first thing you'll notice that the width of the fin stack, the new one is wider, this is narrower. And looking at the top right, this is a gradual slope, where else this is a steep slope. So flowing through liquid through a gentle slope, right, you will cause less restriction and to flow off from your fin stack, which is conducting the heat from your um, processor itself. So I believe this engineer is meant to be this way and to improve the uh, temperature. Besides talking about the um, service kit that have changed the cold plate on my 280 itself. Now take example if you do not change the cold plate look at the quality of the year 2019 cold plate that I have and compared to the recent one which my friend have bought this was this year January February now this is bad but on the previous revision 1 and 2 right which is dated year 2019 and the earlier um, 2021 this is the quality of it though the width of the uh, fin stack is not as big, big as this right if you're using on an AM4 platform, not a problem. But if you're using an AM5 platform, I would advise you if you can purchase the uh, service kit or try to obtain from Arctic itself. And I'll tell you what's the reason why. It's why you should retain this uh, liquid AL instead of wasting it. It's like disposing it and spend another his sum of money to purchase another AIO. Just a verification. Now, those people who want to obtain this service kit, make sure that you have purchased your AIO within the period of May 2021 to March 2022. Those is after and before, you don't have to worry. And especially when you purchase the AIO itself, right, there's this QC pass sticker on the radiator. If this is seen, right, you will not need this service kit at all. And as earlier on, I mentioned that on my previous 2019 AIO which is not affected as you can see it's not affected but it will be good if you're using an AM5 platform which is the 7000 series to change the cold plate I mean the cold plate reason being of the width itself let me take you to the benchmark and to show you what are the improvement made on the cold plates what you see here are the recordings that I've done in Cinebench R23 on a AMD5 platform using the 7000 series CPU and at this illustration I'm using the 7950X with my old 280 liquid freezer 2. 
Now on the left itself, this is the old cold plate, which is the original cold plate I've not changed, revision 1, revision 2. And over on the right hand side, this is the new revision 3 and above. Now take note that on 7000 series CPU itself, they do not judge based on the temperature and how much you can cool it. What it does is in fact, it will push up all the way to 95 degrees and depending on how good your cooler is, it will draw the uh, power package from your motherboard and to give it a better clock speed as you can see on the left and on the right. Bring you in that where you can see when I show you live with the cameras. Now these are the zoom out. As you can see the old cold plate and the new cold plate, this is the surface kit. Comparing the Finstack itself, they are of the same but the new Finstack is in fact wider in length and the channel of the uh, back canal over here is deeper as you can see it's deeper looking at the other angle where i show you the uh, slope we have mentioned that this is narrower on the old cold plate and on the new cold plate this is wider after illustrating the in-depth of the cold plate be the revision one and revision two against the uh, service kit now on the background itself as mentioned this is a am5 platform which is running a 7950x what it does is in fact it will calculate the uh, amount of cooling that you can provide and you will pull the amount of power from the motherboard in order to sustain a high clock speed which you can see here on my left you can see that it's running consistently of 4.8 gigahertz so it's around there and on my right it's running 4.9 gigahertz consistently so this tells that after you change the cold plate to the uh, surface kit cold plate with all the uh, things that I've mentioned to you it does improve on the clock frequency before I jump into the offset brackets provided by Arctic let me show you the platform on AM4 and AM5 the layout if you see this on my left this is the AM4 platform which is the 5000 series now these are the dies on the chip itself and it's quite centered as you can see the top and bottom and the sides and jumping on to the AM5 platform which is the new platform the 7000 series now take a look at the die itself as you can see the top which having the bigger die itself is slightly lower as compared to the two die at the bottom see you look at the gap but the sides are of the same now start off with the uh, offset bracket you have the revision 2 and 3 or revision 4 or 7 to 7 what's the difference now this was the early stage whereby um, Arctic had found out that the uh, fin stack on the uh, AIO itself right, is offset so it's not really centered so what they did is actually done a offset bracket which is revision 2 and 3 and this comes with 3 holes and if you notice right there's an arch over here I'll talk about this later and for the improved version where you can fit the AM4 and AM5 which is the 5000 and the 7000 series you can make use of the re revision 4 and 7 which at this end right it's flat it's not arched now reason for me during the AM4 period which is the 5950X I did not use this offset bracket though I've actually obtained it reason being right is because of this arch let me just show you now if you were to use this revision 2 or 3 right with this arch which arch over here it hits my armor plating that's the reason why so I make use of the original mounting which I'm going to show you but of course you can make use of the new revision 4 and 7 whereby the back is straight so it wouldn't be a problem and it will not hit your armor plate now just an illustration this is my 5950X on a ASRock Tai Chi X570 and this is the liquid freezer 2 cold plate and as you can see the cold plate right you might say that it's centered but if I were to move off from the um, IHS a little you'll see that this fin stack in fact is not sitting at the center of the IHS so that's why I think I provided this offset bracket so that you can bring down as you can see it flashes here you bring down the uh, cold plate to center this to this die over here which is actually on your processor now the first two in fact 
I've not used the uh, offset bracket just to show you. So this is the arrangement. This is the whole AIO that flushes the screws over here. By the way, this you can't find the screws anymore because I think I have no longer supplied this kind of original screws. They have come out with the uh, offset bracket. So everyone have to use the offset bracket. As you can see, this is the original mounting. If this AIO block is to sit over here, right, as I illustrated over here, when I pull off, as you can see, the die, which is quite centered, right? Now, as I mentioned, this cold plate is not centered. You can see that it's towards here rather than at the back. So that's why the die itself, right, it will only cover this way. If you are following the original um, positioning, see, it will cover the big die and a bit on the two small dies. But if you were to use the offset bracket, which is the lower bottom two, it brings down your AIO lower and bring the cold plate down. So having to say, this might look not centered, but actual fact, when you look on the right hand side, it is at the center. So this will have a better contact and giving you better thermal results and higher clock speed. Now, of course, today I'm not going to illustrate on the 5950X. Instead, I'll be illustrating on this steel legend, which is the uh, X670E that's making use of the uh, 7950X. Now, bigger advantage on the AM5. As you can see, over here, the top two, right? If I were to place the original position here, okay, without the offset bracket, when I move off from the center, as you can see, this might be center, but looking on the die itself, right? The gap on the bigger die, which is much lower. So it's sitting around here. Having to say this, right? The behind die, it will be much lower. See, this is what happened. It can cover up the top die, but the bottom two die, not so. So having to say this, right? If you were to apply the offset bracket, you're bringing the um, whole cold plate down which you can see over here. And when I when I shift right, yeah, it might not look off, I mean, it might not look center, but the thing is, it does cover all the dice over here, which is this. Now, let me just take you to the actual benchmark and to show you the uh, clock frequency. On this benchmark itself, I have to emphasize, this is tested on a 7950X with a 280 liquid freezer too, which was bought year 2019 and I'm still using it right now for the test. And as you can see at the top two section, right? In fact, I've shown you earlier, whereby you have swapped from the old to new and you're getting a max clock speed 4.9 gigahertz. And looking at the bottom over here, where I applied not only the new cold plate, but with the offset bracket, take a look at the core frequency, which is running on five gig and above. So this tells that by changing the cold plate of the old um, 2019 liquid freezer 280, it does improve the temperature and plus the cold plate, it even increases better clock frequency. Reason being, it provides better cooling solution to your AM5 or the 7000 series. There you have it, illustrating to you if your AIO is affected and you purchase your AIO within the period of May 2021 to March 2022, you'll be able to obtain this service kit from Arthic. And if you have not been affected right, in fact, you will perform very well. Just that to take note that for those older generation like what I'm having right now, in fact, I'm proud to say that this performed very well, though it's purchased at the year of 2019, December 25th, which is Christmas, and it's been using till now. All I need is just to change the cold plate and probably for those of you having the old unit, right, you can obtain this um, service kit by purchasing it. Probably you make some inquiries with Arthic. And also to make use of the uh, offset bracket, which is very effective. As I believe most of the AIOs out there, right, they might not have this bracket. And as mentioned to you, the uh, location on the dies inside this uh, IHS itself, right, is offset, really offset. So even if other AIOs have the center uh, piece, right? It might not cover all the dice. Where else Arctic did a brilliant job? I'm not sure they did predict this or not, but 
with this offset bracket is of an advantage which I've shown you. Besides this, if you to look at my top right hand corner where I show you the pictures of all the 360 AIO that I have, I am going to test all this AIO by default using this AM5 platform. I just want to know which is a good AIO, inclusive of my 360 um, Arctic Liquid Freezer 2. And on top of it, right, as provided, or should I say borrowed from a friend, Yongkit, thank you very much for the T30, as you can see on the picture on the top right hand corner. I'll be swapping those fans with the AIOs, each and even every one of them, including inclusive of the Arctic Liquid Freezer 360. Reason of doing so, right, I wanted to test which AIO gives the best cooling. Not by default, but with the T30 fans. Now, having said this, right, I'd like to thank Arctic for giving me the opportunity to illustrate so much things that I've discovered and I was shocked. Having said this, for those of you who are actually new to my channel, welcome to my channel and if you like my content, do remember to subscribe and if you do not want to miss any of my future content, do click on the notification bell button. Till then, take care, goodbye, see ya.